So today we will be putting the service uh, in our component, in our smart component that was built before. So as you reckon, uh, this is the state of the component before we started to build the infrastructure layer. So today we just need to use the service in here. In order to do that, I will do it this TDD way, of course. So I will open the spec file first. And then um, yeah, I like to have my tests on the right and then the production code on the left. So what I want to be using here is um, I want to actually inject that service first. So let me guide you through like a junior way of doing this. Uh, and then in the next videos, I'm going to show you a better way to do it. So the first thing I really want to do is to provide my service. So we're going to use obviously a normal way of injecting services in Angular. So we will use this user service right here. This will not work because we know that the user service depends on the um, HTTP client model. So we need to import that. Yeah, uh, there is also one little glitch is that uh, we use the matlisp item in here, so we should be importing that as well. It's not exactly a best practice to do so, but um, yeah, this is not the purpose of this video. So the next thing is that if you run this, you will get an error. Is because when you actually look at the user service, you can see this injection token we've talked. Uh, about before, so we need to provide that one as well. In order to do it, what I can do is to go here and just copy paste this one. Yes, it's uh, it's weird that we're copy pasting stuff, but remember the first step of TDD is to make the test read, um, and that allows you to copy paste stuff because then you will have the refactor stage later. So. Um, after I launch all this, what I need to do is to write my test. Um, and let's say it should get all users. All right. And in here, we're going to spy. Oh, uh, before I can actually use it, I need to get the use of it. So let me take a user service which is the instance of user service. And in my before each, I like to do it before the test changes. Um, I will call it, I will actually take it from the uh, test bed module. And to do that at the current state, we use the inject. All right, so now I have access to the user service. So again, every test should consist of like, two or three steps, but steps in order should be given when then. Uh, I'm going to talk more about it uh, when we talk more about the end-to-end -end testing and acceptance testing. But generally think about it like, first you want to set up your test, then you want to execute a single command or, or call or whatever, and then you want to see the state afterwards. So in this situation, I will just make like a get all users by. And here I will use the spy on method on the user service. And then I'm going to say get all. That's what I'm spying on. And in order to actually execute it, I need to, uh, I will put it to, like when I look at the component, the good place to do it is here. I mean, this is where I'm going to put it. There are better places, of course, but uh, since it's already here, so I'll, I'll just stick to it. So in order to actually make Angular aware of it, I have to execute that lifecycle because it doesn't get executed on its own. And then I need to expect something. So in here, I will say to have been called. Cool. This way, this is my test. Let me see if I made any obvious mistakes. All right, so it says that well, it didn't say like I didn't import something or I'm missing some information. So we know like it got to this test um, and I can see like the first one passed and now the second one failed. It's because I don't call uh, get all on the user service. Of course I don't, it's because I don't have it here. 
So let me just fix that really quick. So now we're going to the second step of the TDD in which we actually um, like making the test green. This is service. Yeah. And in here I will replace this with the user service that all right. All right. Let me run it. Okay, so green. So it's pretty good. We don't get any errors. We get two total success in the end. Okay, great. So now is the refactor stage. Um, so I, I get asked quite a lot, like, do I also refactor the test code? Well, yes, you do. You do refactor both production and the test code. So, and this is the case right now. So what I don't like is that I repeat myself here. In our company, we follow with a dry rule, which means don't repeat yourself. Um, and in this situation, I do repeat myself. I repeat myself here in the module and as well as here. Um, you have to be cautious about not actually calling the methods in your test code from the production code because you really couple them together. It's not how it works. But this is like a setup method. This is like a stop. Um, that's okay. So let me make an export um, const and I'll call it provider. Uh, which is just this object. And here I can provide it. And now in here I can use the same. All right, and after every factor, you ought to run the test again, just to make sure you're still green. And we are. Okay, this is fine, but pretty basic. Um, let, me, let me show it in the next video about some more robust approach to it.